Well, good morning and welcome once again to the Morning Meditation with God radio ministry brought to you each morning at this same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. And then at 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible School. At 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study, prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7.00. If you would like to study the Bible in the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the Bible correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is the personal home study where someone would come, sit down, study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774 39 Eight six, and uh, we'll register you today. In other announcements, want to remind you that um, we're coming up on uh, July the tenth. We'll be having our fifth annual uh, Education Freedom Day prayer breakfast. Uh, that will be. Uh, coming up um, and um, we are looking forward to that uh, our speaker this year is the Honorable Derek Ramsey Secretary of Education and Workforce uh, Development Cabinet of Kentucky our theme this year is um, uh, strengthening the basics uh, and uh, uh, preparing youth for the 21st century workplace. We're looking forward to that and we hope that you're going to join with us and you'll be a part of uh, this. We're asking that you make your plans. Go online and let us know that you're going to come. You can go and, and make your donation. We're asking for a donation of $75. Uh, however, if you can't do that, we want your presence there. Uh, so we look forward to it, and we hope that uh, you'll join with us uh, in this on July the 10th from 8 to 9.30 a.m. Also, our Strengthening uh, Family Support Ministry, Strengthening the Family Series 2018. We will be hosting workshops and activity weekends uh, to strengthen um, the, the family through marriage workshops and uh, parenting, uh, singles, uh, and grandparenting. Uh, it is, it is uh, high time that we strengthen the family, and I know of no greater, no greater opportunity than it is today that, that is needed. The family structure is in real uh, trouble and uh, uh, I know of no other way that's going to strengthen the family um, better than the Word of God and those uh, that are uh, um, uh, using the Word of God as their, as their basic guide. So uh, on July the 13th, 14th, and 15th, uh, we will be having our uh, strengthening uh, parenting uh, workshops, and and we hope that you're going to join with us uh, that weekend. On Saturday, we'll be the workshops begin at ten. Registration and continental breakfast will be at from nine to ten, and then at um, ten a.m. the um, uh, workshops began uh, trauma 
what are children going through? Parents, you need to know what uh, children are going through uh, and uh, the trauma that is in their life. We need to know that. Uh, we are working and we uh, have a tentative commitment that the First Lady, um, Glenna uh, Bevan, may be with us uh, for, for our luncheon. And we hope, trust, and pray that you will be with us um, during that session and uh, uh, come and be with us. Praise be unto God. You'll, get, you'll be blessed uh, to be at the workshop. In our weekly activities, our community prayer walk uh, will be um, meeting on the first Thursday of each month. Um, July the 5th uh, will be the prayer walk. Um, we'll go into our neighborhood and pray uh, for our community. So let's keep that in mind. Also, uh, in area-wide news, the 36th and Garland Church of Christ will be closing out their gospel meeting and revival tonight. Um, and I uh, want to just encourage you to go and be with them. Uh, their uh, brother James K. Hamilton of Dallas, Texas, is doing the the preaching and oh you want to go and and uh see this last night we were we put it on uh, we did stream it on facebook live you can go on the midwest church of christ um uh and uh i think i've even uh, shared it on on mine so uh either way you can you can go on and and um uh, see the sermon uh, last night and oh he did a wonderful job and I am confident that he'll do a wonderful job uh, tonight so please be uh, with them also um, also the um, Northside Church of Christ is having a um, made new unity con uh, concert Saturday, uh, June the 14th. Now that won't prevent you coming to the um, uh, uh, parenting uh, workshop, but at because this will be at 6:30 uh, p.m. This will be at 6:30 uh, p.m. So let's keep that in mind. It'd be at 6.30 p.m. We had it in the program that it would be at, at, at 5, but it will be at um, uh, 6.30 p.m. that Saturday at the Northside Church of Christ in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Also, the Kingsley Terrace Church of Christ in Indianapolis is hosting a single seminar Saturday, August the 18th. Uh, the theme is Living Single as a Christian. Uh, registration begins from 8 to 9, and the program from 9 a.m. Uh, unto 4 p.m. So let's keep that in mind, and let's remember uh, this is great uh, uh, for us, for our singles. Now let, uh, let's remember our sick and shut-in. I want to remember Sister Bertha Frazier, Sister uh, Don Marie Sizemore, Sister Melody Stokes, Sister Mary Wood, uh, Sister Angelo, I mean, Brother Angelo uh, Pendergrass, and uh, Brother David Wilson. Also pray for our shut-in, Sister Mamie Cartwright, Sister uh, Louise Covington, Sister uh, Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, uh, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Vivian Wakefield, uh, Brother James Frazier. Also pray for those going through the dialysis and other treatments. Want to pray for our um, good friends, 
Sister Jessie Bennett, Sister Darlene Hayes, Sister Angela Walls Gill, Sister uh, Sheila Heiner, and uh, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler there in Evansville. So we want to give thanks to them, and also we want to pray for Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Dennis Reynolds, Brother Richard Rolls, Brother Gary King, Brother Frederick Hines, and uh, my oldest brother, Marvin Stevenson, Jr. Uh, want to give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. Want to say thank you to uh, Sister Linda Bird, uh, Brother Alvester Curry, uh, Sister Rose Coleman, Sister Geraldine Garvin, uh, Brother James Malone, and Sister Marceline Marshall, Sister uh, Angelica Robertson, Sister Ethel Rivers, uh, Sister Joey Stevenson, S Brother Kevin Stevenson, Sister Amanda Smith, Sister uh, Brother Clark Standard, uh, Sister Elaine Watts, and Sister Marilyn Wester, and our dear friends, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi. Thank you so much for your generosity and kindness towards this ministry. Praise be unto God. Would you uh, bow with me? Let's go to God in prayer. But first of all, let me say that the funeral service for Sister Betty Standard will be here at the Midwest Church of Christ, 2115 Garland Avenue, here on Saturday morning at um, uh, uh, 11 a.m. Then on uh, Friday night, the viewing of the body, the wake will be at the Hetty Funeral Home there on Dixie Highway. Um, uh, uh, and then uh, we want to continue to pray for them. The funeral service for David White uh, Sr. is scheduled also for Saturday, um, and uh, his wake will be on Friday there at the church. So um, let's keep these uh, in mind, and let's remember these families. Praise be unto God. Dear God and Father in heaven, we come this morning with a bowed head and humbled heart, recognizing, O oh God, that you are God, you are he that gave his life a ransom for our sins. O oh Lord, you paid the price that no one else could have paid. And I praise your name. And Lord, we come now and we ask that you go with everyone here today. Please, O oh God, help us in everything that we do. Keep us in your care. And, O oh, Father, I pray for our children of this generation. I pray that as we work with our children, that you will help us be the example that you would have us to be. I pray for the parents and grandparents and uncles and aunties that are all caring for these children. Father, I pray that the church may be the church that you would have us to be, that we might be a light unto the world and a salt unto the, the earth. Go with us today. Bless every soul that is listening this morning. May they refine a renewed hope. In Christ Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Now, let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor standeth in the way of of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, 
and it's in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Jesus come to show us how to live in this new kingdom of God. Matthew records him teaching his disciples in the mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 3, the Bible, the word of God says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Now, let's open up our Bibles to the book of Proverbs the 29th chapter, and the verse is 23. The word of the Lord says, A person's pride will humble him, but a humble spirit will gain delight. Wednesday, June the 27th, 2018, our daily devotion entitled Pride Brings You Down. Pride is the great enemy of the Christian. Pride is an overly high opinion of yourself. It motivates you to do things that you know are not Christ-like. And it hinders you from doing what, thing, what brings glory to God. Pride influenced Adam and Eve to try to become like God in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5. Pride motivated Cain to murder his brother in Genesis chapter 4. Pride provoked Joseph, provoked Joseph's brothers to sell him into slavery in Genesis 37 and verse 8. 
pride caused King Saul to resent David so deeply that he tried to murder him in 1 Samuel uh, 18 and verse 8. Pride led King Hezekiah to foolishly reveal his nation's wealth to his enemies. In Isaiah chapter 39 and verse 2, pride was the root of the Pharisees' anger towards Jesus. Pride was the reason the disciples argued over rank in the kingdom of God in Luke chapter 9 and verse number 16. Yes, my brothers and sisters, pride is your relentless enemy. If you succumb to its influence, there will be severe consequences. You may know that you have offended someone, but pride holds you back from asking forgiveness. You may realize you need to reconcile a broken relationship, but pride will lead you to deny that need. The Spirit may convict you that you are living a sinful lifestyle, but pride will discourage your admitting to it. Pride will convince you that you are deserving of better treatment. Pride will impede your serving others. Instead, pride will have you striving for places of prominence. Pride will have you listen to flatterers and ignore honest counselors. Pride will lead you to isolate yourself so that you are not accountable to others. Humility, on the other hand, is pleasing to God and places your life in a position where God will honor you. If pride has crept into some areas of your life, Here's what you do. Ask God to give you victory over it before it robs you of God's will for you. And so is the readings from the books of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. And here in the book of Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Now let's turn to our featured study found in the book of Colossians, the third chapter. The Bible, the Word of God says, beginning at verse number five, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil conscupiousness, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God com cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walked sometime 
when you live when you lived in them. We're going to stop there this morning because we're getting ready to start two basic thoughts here. First of all, uh, this deals with a violent passage of Scripture. Now, I, 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 I could only wish that I could borrow from Brother James uh, Hamilton, who's doing the um, gospel meeting and revival there at the um, at the 36 and Garland Church of Christ. If I could borrow from him the violence of what God uh, put Jesus through is the same violence, violent picture that God uses in order to cleanse us from our sins. The first demand that God puts upon us is to is is the is the demand of violence, and that is to put to death the sins that enslave the body and its members. The word mortify means to put to death or to act or to act as though the body is dead. The believer in Christ Jesus is to take the various parts of his body and put them to death in so far as the as sin is concerned god says it, jesus once said it is uh, it is better for you if you if your right hand offends you cut it off for it is better to go into the judgment with one hand than two that will take you into hell fire. My brothers and sisters, he goes on to say, if your left eye offends you, pluck it out, for it is better to go into the judgment with uh, one eye than to go into hell with two eyes. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that's a serious matter. He And the way God uh, concludes this matter is he says to us, mortify, that is cut up our hands, cut up uh, our bodies. My brothers and sisters, over in the book of Romans, the sixth chapter, we find that the Lord says there, and, and uh, he says, let not, in verse number 12, let, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Now look at verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of, of righteousness unto God. Now, let me be clear. He says, your, your, he says, don't allow your members, your members. What is he talking about, pastor? He's talking about all of your body parts. He says, now, what you need to do is slice those hands off, slice those old arms off, slice those old feet, those old legs, and uh, that old body, that old head, chop it off, cut it, murder it, chop it to pieces. I come to tell you, I want you to know God says, get bloody. I'll get bloody with you. I'll cut you all up. I'll, a amen. A man walls and electric lights. God wants you to get, he wants you to get violent. 
with your with your with your with your sin laden arms and body parts cut them off and that's what that word mortify me put your old life to death put the old body uh, 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 to death that's why the apostle Paul says I am crucified with Christ there's got to be a crucifixion my brothers and sisters you've got to be willing to put to death to mortify be violent put that stuff to, to, to death and brothers and sisters when you put it to death let it stay dead. Amen. Yes. It's very difficult. But that's what God is wanting us to do. The point is this. It is an act of the mind and the spirit. A, per a person wants to live for Christ. Therefore, he looks at his body and that is sin. The only way he can possibly conquer uh, sin is to treat his body as dead to sin or to consider that our bodies are, are, have been violently murdered by the Spirit of God. Brothers and sisters, God's Word is that two-edged sword that the Hebrew writer talks about. He says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing any, amen, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and, and of the joints and the marrow and, uh, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. He says, cut it up. Take the word of God and cut violently. Destroy this old body. Tear this body up because that body is in the way of your spiritual new clothes that God is wanting to put on you. My brothers and sisters, in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, the uh, eighth chapter, I believe it is, uh, the book of Romans, it, it lets us know, verse uh, chapter 13, rather, Romans 13, that's what I'm looking for. In Romans 13, the scripture tells us, uh, he says, now the time, it is high time that you awake out of your sleep. Amen. Cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. He says, you violently take off those clothes. Your old body don't want you to, but take them off. He says, take off. But what your, your new life, those garments that you have, will not make it with you. you got to turn, take those old clothes off. Take them off. The devil is going to try to keep you from doing it, but I come to tell you, you got to take them off. Take those bodies. Take, fight it. Cut it. Cut it. Rip them off of you because they're not fit for your new life in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, it is high time. It is high time that we take off these old clothes and the devil is going to try to keep you from it, but rip them off. Rip them off. Take the sword of God and strip them off. My brothers and sisters. And then he says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting, not in rioting and drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But let us put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust therein. 
my brothers and sisters, Jesus We need to cut these sins up. These sins are in our members. And I want to just be clear to all of you. Let me be clear with you. All, the Bible says, all have sinned and come short uh, of the glory of God. I want you to know I'm the first one to admit I am a sinner. I am the worst sinner in all of the world. But I am a sinner that have found grace in the love of Jesus Christ. He says, cut this sin off. He says, cut, cut the sins off. The sin of fornication, the sin of uncleanliness, the sin of inordinate affection, Cut off the passion, the craving, the strong desire, the intense arousal, the driving of lust. It is a, it is a desire of craving for the wrong things, such as, uh, a, a man, the second and third helpings of, of food. When God cuts you off, when he says mortify, he says cut it violently. You can't play with this sin. You got to cut that sin out of your life. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28 and 9, Jesus said, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if they, if thy right hand offend thee, pluck it out and cast it in uh, from thee, for it is profitable for thee that that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. My brothers and sisters, be careful. You got to cut it out. Those of you that are struggling with this inordinate affection of, of homosexuality and lesbianism, there, there is hope for you. Don't you dare think God doesn't have love for you. Don't you dare think he can't uh, help you. But I come to tell you, don't allow pride to get in your way. Don't allow your, your pride to keep you from being what God wants you to be. Because God says, if you don't, he'll give you up. My brothers and sisters, The Lord wants us to know. The Lord wants us to know that he and he alone is the one who can cleanse us. And let me just be clear. You know, sometimes we we you know, we we uh we we talk about the homosexual uh and what the homosexual needs, but I come to tell you every last one of us needs what the homosexual needs. Let me take you to the book of uh, 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 1 Corinthians. The chapter is 6. Y'all go with me now. You need this. He says in verse number 9, Know ye not that, uh, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But look at what he says. Look at what he says now. Be ye not deceived. Okay? Don't be deceived. Don't be blindsided. He says, neither fornicators or idolaters or adulterers or effeminate or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. He says, all of these shall none of these shall inherit the kingdom of God. But look at what, look at what you need. And such were some of you, but ye are 
washed, but ye are sanctified, ye are justified uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. My brothers and sisters, when God tells us here in the book of Colossians chapter 5, chapter 3 and verse 5, mortify, mortify the members, mortify the fornication, mortify the uncleanliness, mortify the inordinate, uh, uh, amen, the inordinate affections, mortify the evil concupiousness, the desire, the yearning, the achings of all kinds of evil. It is within a person that pulls him uh, to desire, to grasp, and to grab and take hold of all form. Do you know if you don't cut the line out, it'll cause you to start stealing, and then it'll start you to start murdering, start you to fornicating, start you to... I'm just telling you now. I'm telling you, it'll just grab a hold of you. You will have no license. You will look at everything. You will feel everything. You will touch everything. You will listen to everything. You will smell everything. You will seek out after everything. My brothers and sisters, you say, I can't help myself. God is... No, God, God ain't got nothing to do with you going through that sin and stuff. He has given you the answer. Cut it. Be violent with that. Be violent with this sin that's in your life. Cut it up. Don't allow it to come back. He says, which things, verse number six says, for which things the wrath of God the wrath of God is upon you. God's wrath, his anger, his decisive and deliberate anger, he, he is intentional. He's intentionally angry with those who refuse to cut and murder and, and destroy this old body. That's the significance of obeying the gospel. For it's, it's in the gospel. It's in the gospel story that the violent death, the violent death of your members, the violent death of your members, gives way to you, gives way to an, an opportunity for you to have your new life in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, he says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Ness. The time has come, my brothers and sisters, to put violently, put to death the sins of the flesh. Because the truth of the matter is, there's a war going on. The flesh is fighting against your spirit and your spirit is fighting against your flesh. The only way you can win is to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God that is able to discern even the, 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 the thoughts and the intent of your heart. God knows it all. Praise be unto God. Whew, that's enough. We all walked like this before. You 
You say, well, Brother Stevens, I didn't do any of those things. Well, you're still without, you're still without the blood of Jesus until you obey the gospel. The same, the same gospel, the same gospel that cleanses me of a whole lot will clean you, will cleanse you of a little. That's how, that's how powerful and how, how direct it is. Yeah, I, I had a whole lot that needed to be cut from me. Yeah, I, no question about it. I had a whole lot. Now, I don't know about y'all. Y'all, y'all was good all along. But even with your good, it, your, all of your righteousness to God is nothing more than filthy rags. So, so to, so, but, but for me, I was dirty all the way over from the outside in. I was dirty, but God cleansed me and I am thankful. I am thankful. And then even after he cleansed me, sin crept back into my life. And I come to tell you, I, I I'm not going to have pride to keep me from obeying the truth of God. And that's what you and I need to do today is to don't allow pride to get in your way. Violently cut. Cut the sin. Murder the body of sin. God bless you. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. Five seven one twelve forty. That's that's the number that you can call and have your have your prayer request brought in. Have your prayer request brought in. If you would like to have prayer this morning, you give us a call. Let us pray together. Let us call upon our God, that our God can bless you. Sister Carmen, praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Stevenson. This is Sister Farmer. How you doing? Thank blessed and highly favored. And how's Sister Mormon this morning? I am blessed and highly favored and just thanking God for what he has already done. Yes. Thank you. I can stand on his word, Pastor. Well, I can't stand on my feet, and that's good news. That's real good news. Praise be unto that's God. That's good news regardless of my circumstances. Thank you. God is good all the time. I enjoyed that sermon. Thank you. I'm telling you, I know I, by the truth, by the Christ that liveth in me, I know that I am filled with the Holy Spirit, but mm -hmm. I leave. And I have to have the word every morning to get me together. Thank you. you know Thank you. I have to have mm -hmm. it. It's work on me. That's right. That's it. Oh, That's yes, it. I, I enjoyed it. I, I like to have prayer for you and your wife and family and for all the ones you prayed it mm -hmm. for this morning, especially for your brother, your holy brother that's sick. I like to have prayer for our church family.
Davis in Texas, and for the, the, the Gilbert family, and for the McAtee family. Mm-hmm. One, McAtee is one of my prayer partners. I'm telling you, I thank God for her, and it's good to have a prayer partner. Amen. I like to have prayer for all the ones in recovery. God is able to do anything but say. Amen. For Amen. Kevin Rondo and family, for Sister Brenda Jones and family, for Sister Tanya Yates and family, and for Brother Randolph and Jacqueline Harris and family, and for Sister Peggy Frank and Mark Hill and family. Mm-hmm. I like to have prayer for uh, Sister Darlene Demos and the Crenshaw family, and Sister Ann Townsend and the Townsend family. I'd like to have prayer for uh, Pastor Charlotte West and family, and for Brother Charles and Patricia Level and family, and for the Price family. Yes, and yes. You have a great day. And you have a very, very blessed, blessed day. We want to pray uh, for Sister Carmen Swain has asked us to pray for her health and her spiritual growth and strength. And uh, Sister um, Marilyn Wester uh, uh, says that pride cometh before fall. Pray for all of us for spiritual growth. Amen, amen, amen. If you would like to have prayer this morning, you give us a call at 571-1240. We'll pray with you. Praise God. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Good morning, Brother Jerry. It's Mike Rainbow. Hey, Brother Michael Rainbow. How you doing, man? Well, I'm just doing the Lord. It's something every day. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Well, I you know, God God will give you strength, my brother. Amen. Amen. Rainbow, what year did you graduate in? Seventy. Seventy. Okay. All right. All right. So a couple of years you'll be ready for your fiftieth um anniversary. Yes, sir, boy. Amen, amen, uh, amen. Well, listen. I ran in, I ran in your buddy in there. I heard where your buddy, her chamber, he's up in uh, St. Uh, uh, Paul. St. Paul, Minnesota? Yes, I talked to you. You know, it's, uh, it's cousin, uh, Jada. Okay, all right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. All right, praise to God. He, uh, so, well, listen. She said, she said, she, she said, what's your, what's your preaching up at? Yeah, he is the chaplain up there uh, of the of the jail of the of the county jail up there. All right, but listen, we 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 we've got to go and close out. But God bless you. Thank you, thank you for listening. We'll be praying for you here. God bless you. Thank you, dear God and Father in heaven. Have mercy upon us. I pray for Sister Mormon. I pray for Michael Rainbow. The Lord, I pray for them. I, I pray that you would bring healing and give him strength to endure, O oh God. Lord, I pray, I thank you, and I honor you today. And, and Lord, be with Sister Marilyn Wester and Sister Carmen Swain. And Lord, I pray not only for them, for all of us, for we all stand in need of prayer. Go with us and keep us, dear God. In the name of Jesus, amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you. I look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this, our God loves you, and so do I.